Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. alaikum and welcome to the sixth lecture of computer programming for civil engineers and we are working on Python. The previous lecture was about scripts and today's lecture is actually the continuation of that lecture but then today's lecture will be the one of the most powerful lectures on Python that you will get in this semester. So beside what we did in the previous lecture, in today's lecture with the help of an of overhead water tank like this one, we are going to learn the case sensitiveness of Python, the use of forward slashes in file paths and some other useful rules that help you that will help you learn writing Python scripts and programs easily and efficiently and in bonus as in all lectures we are going to learn how to write functions and our own libraries like numpy library or matplotlib library or math library perhaps so let's get on with this lecture so just like before we are going to write our program in spider so let's run it by clicking on start button clicking on anaconda tab and then clicking on spider you can easily run spider by writing in windows search as spy and here it will be on the top and you can just simply click it and it will start running for you so here it is our blank untitled file to write our script with two pre-written comments we don't need them so let us delete them so so let's see the case study that we are going to do today so our today's program is about an overhead water tank just like this cylindrical water tank that you can see now it has uh, one inlet and two outlets and the inlet goes all the way to the top and inflows and fill the water tank while the other two pipes that supply water to the community are just connected near the bottom only so that the tank can be drained easily now our today's task is to actually calculate the time in seconds it takes to empty a water tank so that if the community is fully consuming water how much time it will take to empty this tank so that we again need to turn on our tube well to fill the tank again so in order to calculate it we are not going to derive anything we are just going to use this formula but let's understand the formula a little bit so the overhead water tank has a diameter d and it is open to atmosphere so that air can fill the upper part otherwise a vacuum or high pressure can be create will be created which can be dangerous and will stop functioning of the overhead water tank now here we are showing the outflow on the side of the tank but in this picture we see two outflows at the bottom but let us consider the simple case of an outlet on the side here for example the diameter of the outlet is d and the height of water above this outlet is measured from the center of the outlet to the top surface of water so for example if the diameter of the outlet is small d the diameter of the circular overhead water tank is capital d and the height of water above the outlet is hi which is the initial level of water and once it get emptied to a certain level let's let us say that the final required level is hf in capital so considering all these variables in order to calculate the time required to empty this tank will be time in seconds is equal to pi d square by 2 which is the diameter of the overhead water tank pi is 3.141592 in the denominator we have pi small d square by 2 which is where small d is the diameter of the outlet we'll talk about c in a while and the root of hi the initial head minus the final head which is the smallest one so it will always be a positive number the difference of the two in the root and all of it is then multiplied with 2 over gravity so if our units are in seconds and meters then gravity will be in meter per second for planet earth which is 9.81 meter per second square now c c is a coefficient of the outlet which can be understand and its value is a unitless value and can be taken as follows so if the outlet is just 
a rounded hole a circular hole and water comes out through this hole like this so for that the value of c is 0.98 if it is sharp edged with a smaller dia inside towards inside then its sharp edge sharp edge outlet value of c is 0.61 and if it is a short tube towards the outlet with the length l of a certain length for example a pipe directly connected to the surface of the tank its value is the value of c is 0.8 and if the outlet pipe also protrudes inward inside the tank called borda outlet the value of c will be 0.51 so in this case we will assume perhaps these two outlet pipes are little bit inserted inside the tank so they are borda type of outlets and the value of c for our case will be 0.51 but now let's come to our python programming now we want to write a program to calculate the time required to empty a cylindrical water tank by taking input of the diameters of the tank and the outlet the wishful height of water initially and the level at the end and rest of the numbers will be constant where we'll, we may ask the user of our program to select the outlet type and then automatically we'll select the value of C accordingly so let us start making this program and with that let's start learn all these 10 things one by one so for the first thing we are talking about the sense case sensitivity case sensitivity of python so for example if i want to take an input from the user about hi the or the initial height and the final height i can for example store these values in variables hi and hf so if I write capital H small i is equal to 10 meters perhaps and then I in the next line I ask Python to print the value of H i and then when I will run this program we'll see the in the output the result is fine so it prints 10 for us but if instead of small i i write capital i here and then run the program then it gives us an error which says that h capital i is not defined and yes it is right is h small i has been defined so oppositely if i keep the i small but also keep h small as well and then play so not only it gives us an error here but if you're using spider it will show the error before compiling or playing that there is something wrong and then hi is not defined it's undefined so this is about case sensitivity so that if anything is small and capital then you have to follow the pattern of capital and small so for example if i write h initial and if i write here h initial it should work fine it printed 10 for us but just making a small difference in case uppercase or a lowercase condition and then play you will see that it gives us an error so we have to be very careful that python is a case sensitive computer programming language and we whatever we write in upper or lower case we have to follow the same pattern all the time so let's assume that we took input of h i as 10 from the user and the final level we want is h small f yeah, yeah we are careful now is one meters only so let's move to the next issue We'll talk about forward slashes in file path later on. So let's move to all executable statements in different lines. So you can see this is a complete statement 
and it can be executed by python by storing the number 10 in a computer memory place which is named hi for us so this is a complete statement so as this one and this one so and we have written all of them in separate lines so this is one of the rules in python that we cannot write two statements together in a single line and if you try to run it it will give you an error so you have to make sure that you are you have written these statements in separate lines like this so i have to change this to hi as well now run again so now everything is working smoothly the next issue is that we can write multiple statements in a single line separated by a semicolon actually so if we are really really interested to write multiple statements of code in a single line we can write them by separating with a semicolon so let's try to run this now and yes it worked absolutely fine we can even write the whole code in a single line but then that will be not a good practice it is running fine it it makes it not easily readable for us so better to write them in separate so let's move on with our code and start taking in other inputs from the user as well so the capital d is the diameter of the overhead water tank let it be given to us to be 20 meters the small d is the diameter of the pipe outlet pipe and let it be 0 0.5 zero five meters let us also define a constant g which is equal to 9.81 meters per second 9.81 meters per second square and also the value of c for now let's consider it as borda type so its value is 0 0.51 0 0.51 so now we have all the variables in in our input let us calculate the total time of emptying the tank and store it in variable t so now we can write t is equal to pi we can also create a constant for that or we can import math library for that purpose so first of all let's do that on the top we'll say import math we can write as m or any variable but i would like to use math name itself so now i can write p equals to math dot pi times capital d double steric means power 2 the whole divided by 2 so in order to do that we close the whole section in parentheses and then divide it by 2 then all of it is further divided by this term so just to make it easy I just copy this close all of it in parentheses and then divide it by in parentheses I will write the same code again but wait a minute I cannot see that on the screen now I can reduce the font but let's learn something new about coding in Python in this situation so I'm skipping five and six now but let's learn about number seven here which is a single statement like this one we are writing t equals to a whole formula can be written in multiple lines yes we want that we want to write the whole formula in separate lines so that we can see it on the screen without reducing the size of the font perhaps or maybe the formula is too long in this line that it, it becomes difficult for us to understand and look at the formula all at once on the screen perhaps so in order to do so we can use backslashes at the end so for example here at the end i can write a backslash first of all and go to the next line 
and then I can start writing the formula that I wanted to actually divide that section divide all of this by this and I don't want to continue any further here so I write backslash again and move to the next line and now what I want is I want to multiply it the whole result further with the square root of hi and hf with their difference so I will say multiply by math dot sqrt hi oops I did a mistake in case sensitivity it should be small i because I'm already using small i here and then also multiply sorry minus math dot let's move to the next line from here backslash and enter minus math dot sqrt h f in small and we want all of this closed in parentheses from here to here so now all of this in parentheses so the green color is showing that this is understood well by python now we further need to multiply the whole result with 2 divided by g so 2 divided by g and here we have a symbol for multiplication so very well so now we have the whole term in these parentheses divided by whole term in these parentheses multiplied by whole term in these parentheses in two separate lines actually and then multiplied by all of it by 2 by g and i mistakenly forgot to put the square root here so let's put a square root behind it by math dot sqrt i cannot see that on the screen so why not let's put it on the next line by writing backslash so let's see the result of t now by printing it printing t so let me run this code so we can see very well it understood every a single formula which was supposed to be in a single line now we have written it easily in a uh, in multiple lines and it is well visible on the screen and it runs fine so let's see how this formula would look like if it was all in a single line so i delete the, this backslash and bring the lower part of division in math in the next line and then delete this backslash and then multiply let's bring it back up there so here it is so you can see it is already becoming a hassle for us so deleting this backslash and bringing the next line at the end again and then finally the last multiplicative term let's bring it back to the previous line and remove the backslash so now all this formula is in a single line and let's run and see if the result comes to be the same as 0 0.97 seconds but wait a minute isn't this too small time to empty this tank the whole tank of 20 meters diameter and depth of water up to 9 meters in it can be entered in just two in one second there is something wrong in the formula and to find it out in this very long written formula it may be a trouble so why not just bring it in multiple lines once again so here with backslash enter and then backslash enter and backslash enter and another backslash and enter so if you notice clearly we forgot to use c in the formula which should be in the denominator here 
also by mistake we used capital D instead of small d here in this formula like you can see here. So let us correct ourselves by replacing it with a small and here we have noted again that Python is a case sensitive programming language. And then in the denominator it is the whole pi d square by 2 is multiplied by c. So allow me to multiply it here like c multiplied by the whole result. So let's run it again and see the result. So the tank will take 30, 306, 1296 seconds to get empty. Let's see how much is that in hours. So I'll simply divide this by 3600 and let's run it again and it will take 85 hours let's say how many days it will take so divide by 24 and then run the code so now we know the whole tank can serve the community 24 hours for three and a half day which is wonderful so let's learn something more about python programming here let's do one thing why not we create a list of all these values of C and whenever we need maybe rounded sharp edged or short tube or a border type of an outlet we can just choose that particular value from the list to be used in this formula here so in order to do that we can create a list a by writing C equals to box bracket and within the box bracket we can write all the values of 0.98 comma 0 0.61 comma 0 0.8 comma 0 0.51 and box bracket closed and this is the zeroth item and the first second and third in terms of the index number how they are stored but for us it is the first second third and fourth value so we, we used so we used the fourth value here which by index is 0, 1, 2 and third value. So we'll write here C box bracket 3. So let's run this code again to see did we get the same 3.5 days result or not. So I play it again and yes it worked fine. So if I change it to zeroth value which is 0 0.98 and run it so it runs fine. Now the point to understand is the next one that we can write a code in a single statement in multiple lines by using backslashes and writing them in the next line like this. But this is not required if we have a portion written inside brackets like this. So for example, if I want to write this portion above and this in the next line, I don't need a backslash here to start from the next line. It's fine for us. So let me play it again and it works fine for us. So let's write maybe three again and see did we get the same result. So yes, the code is working fine. So we use backslashes in all statements. But if we have statement with box brackets, or curly brackets like dictionaries or tuples closed in parentheses we can have multiple lines without backslashes in them as we have just seen now the next thing to learn is we can have blank line gaps in the script so for example i want to separate all the variables that we stored with values from the code that runs and gives us the result so why not let's press some enters and give a gap there so now we know this portion is separate and this portion is separate and yes it is fine for python and we can do that so let's run this code again and yes there is no issue the blank lines have been considered as blank comments automatically by python so now let's talk about the fifth one here which says strings can be enclosed in single quotes like this one the red one 
or double quotes like these green ones or maybe in single but triple quotes or double but triple quotes like this so in order to demonstrate that let me write days at the end of this duration so why not first of all round all of them by writing so we can see first of all there are so many decimal places in there and it is enough to round it to only a single decimal place so we can do that by writing by writing round and within parentheses we'll close all the numbers but here before after calculation we'll write a comma and we'll say that whatever this result is round it to two decimal places for example so let's run the code again and you can see now the 3.54509 and this whole term is now rounded to 3.55 now let's add a string at the end by writing plus and within single quote we'll write space days just to give a small gap between the number and the text days so let me run it now and we have an error that we cannot add a string with a float which is absolutely right so in order to do that we have to convert this whole result of rounding the number into a string so we can do that by writing str and within parenthesis we can close the whole round term like this again it's not visible very clearly so I can reduce the size of the font perhaps like this or maybe I can use backslashes to write this statement in multiple lines so let's run it again and before that we have closed in these blue parentheses the str is used to convert the whole result into string we are round within these blue brackets calculate t over 3600 divided by 24 and round it to two decimal places and now this string can be added with this string because both of them are strings so let's run it again and here we have the result 355 3.55 days and we as we have just learned instead of single quotes we can use double quotes and let's run it it works smoothly we can also use single quote three times like this and let me run it same result as before and we can also do the same thing by actually writing double quote three times and closing the whole string in double quotes three times and finally run it and see it works fine all the time and gives us the expected answer now next section says comments and remarks which we learned in the previous lecture can be given with a hashtag or we can close uh, write our comment within triple double quotes uh, as well so let me write a quote uh, a comment on the top saying uh, with the hashtag calculate emptying time of cylindrical water tank I don't want this all long statement I just click here press enter and put another hash here too now here I want to write the formula about the formula for example so I will write maybe I can use triple quotes like these and write anything in between like this is the formula to calculate M 
fifteen time of a water tank for height of water dropping from H I to H F for example and let's run the code so now all these green area and gray area is just a comment it worked fine it is not a code so no error appeared on whatever I wrote there but rest of the portion worked perfectly fine now if you remember in lecture number four where we imported the data of road profile from a file we used forward slashes for the path of the file so when we copied the code it was when we copied the path from the browser for example like this path once we copied it we saw it is written with backslashes but notice whenever python write any path of a file it don't write it with backslashes but it write with forward slashes so always whenever you want to show a path of a folder or a file just like this the path of a file which is untitled zero dot py file which is this one and the folder path for example this folder in which we are working they are always with forward slash and not with backslash just like in this path so we use that already in lecture 4 go there and learn and revise that if you want now the last thing is that whenever you search for python help online for python 3 specifically you may get results which are for python 2 and python 2 code sometimes become very different for, from python 3 so be careful to note maybe that code will not run in your script or in your interpreter here because actually the code was in python 2 style so because we are studying python 3 so whenever you search for code online try to convert it into python 3 or be aware that it is not it might not be running because it is in a python 2 style we may talk about some differences later on about them but one of the difference is that in python 3 whenever we write a print command we close everything in parentheses that we want to print but in old python python 2 we just write a space after it and remove the parentheses so that it is just written like this and it worked fine in python 2 but this method is now no more available in python 3 and after print we write everything within parentheses now what we are left with is this section which is about indentation of block of a code and with this we will learn something about functions in python so notice we imported a library called math here what about importing a library of your own perhaps so in order to do that let me first of all save this code in our folder so i'll click on file save move to our lecture folder and in lecture python files i'll save it by the name of lec6 classwork and save it there now let me create a new file by either clicking on this icon or pressing ctrl n or clicking on file and new file from here now lecture 6 is here while a blank file is right over here 
Now, let me define a function by saying DEF space emptying time I intentionally wrote capital T here and then in the parenthesis after it I write a list of all inputs that are required to calculate emptying time so that would be capital D comma small d comma c comma h i comma h f and we know pi to g this two and this two are constants so we don't need them to be inputted now after writing this like this define of we defined a function by the name of emptying time which takes in input all these values and then calculate and return the emptying time to us now once I wrote this at the end I will write colon now you will be thinking what am I doing so notice this if you notice here once I wrote import math I was then able to write math.py or math.square root so these were two functions this was a function in math library called square root or sqrt while this is a constant in a library called math which has a constant value so we want our own library which has a function to calculate emptying time of this tank and perhaps list of all constants that we want for Borda pipe or sharp edged pipe and other so in order to create that library I opened a blank file and I wrote a function title like this now in order to calculate all that I can write that formula below it but what I will do is I'll simply copy all this formula from here control C and then pressing enter below it I'll be I'll paste it here but notice here it has not brought us back to the start of the line let me take you our classwork today whenever I at the end of a line here I click enter it takes us to the start point of this line but whenever I use define function and used a colon here and pressed enter it brought us with a gap or a space here now this is called an indent or a gap so what we so what is its use is now whatever we write here with a gap for example this formula will take all these inputs use them here and calculate t for us and all these and whatever we wrote right at the end for example let me also copy the printing the whole result at the end to be the part of this function if I press enter here it remains there with the tab so I paste it here and I see a list of errors here so in order to get rid of this error let's first of all define uh, import a math library here as well so when I will say import math but this time let's let's for change import as M so now wherever I write math I will write M here as well here this one and the last use was here now in order to understand indentation let me write all the all of this in a single line so just to see the whole thing in a single line first of all look how complicated it has become just to see that formula even 
and remove this backslash as well which was a very long formula now I zoom it out zoom it in again and notice we have an error here and it's about indent it says unexpected indent so what is indentation is is the space that you give after for example with one backspace now I have created the indentation now here let's clear this error as well so in this line the, it says there's an error and it says undefined name G so let us do as well above it let me write a line G equals to 9.81 so now everything seems smooth so what this gap means is that everything written under this line with this gap will run when we will call emptying time so because our created with one function of emptying time for example let water tank so it is a water tank library just like we have a math library we, we are creating a water tank library so I'm going to file then save and the same folder of lecture do I file I'll simply save this spy file as water tank and just to prove the concept of K I keep everything small so that we can import it with the small letters and I click so now we have two files one is water tank by six class work now the value of C appears here and it is used directly here we are not importing the whole list for example we just want to use a value of C there so let me remove the list item number from here so now whatever is the value of C given it will sit here now let me go our classwork and this time let us remove everything because we don't need them anymore and we have created a library for us to use it so this time what I will do is I and I make sure that in the folder in which I have saved lecture 6 file in the same folder I have a water tank file so I import water tank from the same folder as W for example and when I press here spider is informing me I haven't used W yet so I have to use it in my code now what I will do is I will simply say W and just like math dot square root I wrote math dot sqrt or dot bi for a constant I'll say W dot and this time the function I remember I want to use is emptying time so here I can start typing that uh, emptying and with capital T time and within parentheses I'll give the values I used earlier which I can take from the variable explorer thanks to names of the variables as well as the history of the data used inside them so first I need to put capital D then small d then C then and a so capital D value I want to give here as 20 small d value it should be 0 0.05 comma the values of C H I and H F will be for example 0 0.51 for border type H I and then H F are 10 and 1 respectively so 10 comma 1 and now once I run this code so what it has done it, it has given result it say it run the file which is this one 
and we it reloaded a module called water tank and this is the final result so now you can see how clean our code has become and how powerful we are now for calculating several type of properties in about water tank so let's learn about indentation of the code or a block of code using tab or spaces so notice the gaps between these lines are all with a here here and here as well in one of the lines I change the space like this still there is a space and it already started giving us an error but let me run this code which imports water tank now and it starts giving us error about that which actually says unexpected indentation so instead of bringing it back to this position I actually push backward to bring it to the same position as the first now once all of them are at the same indent this becomes a block of code so this means that whenever we will call emptying time it will run this block of code not just one line so whenever we call emptying time it runs this block of code now to create a block you need to provide a tab or a space or many spaces to create an indent but whatever gap you create it should be consistent with all the lines for example here like this as well as here now let's run this code again uh, sorry if we go to lecture 6 where we import water tank and then I run it it called function it worked perfectly fine so we can have any type of a gap but it should be consistent notice after if actually I don't give any gap or indent and then it already started giving us an error of indentation but in any case let us import as expected it is going to give us an error of the same indented block that there is no indentation so there must be some kind of gap or indent in there so let me give a one space and another space is there and I press I go back to my code where I import on it so it's working perfectly fine now this is how I define a function and whatever lines this function should run should be written with an indent after it it can be any number of space spaces it can be any number of tabs but it is important that to create a block we have to indent it now about functions we'll have a separate lecture but let's go to and add some constant just like in math library we have a pi constant which we can access by writing m dot or math pi in the previous example for example let's create our constant as well and for us let me write here without an indent i will write c is equal to 0. 5 1 and I save it control s I go back to my code and here if you remember we used to write the value of c you can now write w dot c now the value of c will be is a part of our library called water tank and it will be brought from this library here its value 0 0.51 and will be given as an input to this function right here let me run this code now like this and we see it run smoothly and give us the correct result now what we can do is we can create multiple variables for example multiple constants for example c round 0 0.98 c sharp equal to 0 0.61 c tube equals to 0 
and finally c bolda equals to 0 0.51 and i control s to save this library so now our library have four constants and one function so we called we imported our library we called its only function and here this time in order to put give the value of a constant here we wrote w dot and if we need borda we'll simply write c borda and let's run this code and then if you want tube for example we'll write c tube like this and now for example if in the next line i write print w dot c borda and then run it so it will not only give us the calculated emptying of c borda so it's just working like our math or numpy library so congratulations you have not only got an introduction of how to write functions but you have practiced very strong programming skills and in bonus you have learned how to write not only functions like these but also create a library of constants and functions so in today's lab in today's lab assessment exercise i want you to do a similar task of creating not one two functions so we we created only one function called emptying time but you will create not one but two functions for example if i copy this code from here and just simply paste it here like this so i have emptying time and then the function called emptying time emptying time too so i have functions in my library of water tank so the first function what it will do it will do something about forces so in your exercise you will input force f and angle theta just like in our function we inputted not only the diameter of the tank but also the outlet the constant and the height of water and the final height of water we required so we had so many inputs but for you i would like to use only two inputs a force and the angle of the force now if this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis then you can find the x component of the force y component of the force perhaps using math sine cosine or perhaps tan functions so the first function will be able to print the x component of that force whose value f is given to it and whose angle theta is given to it and simply the second function is just a copy of it but it has the ability to give the y component of the same force and theta theta can be in radians or degrees whatever you like so you know that python sine cosine and tan functions trigonometric functions in math library use angles in radians so if you are inputting the angles in degrees you have to radian to use them in math library once you have written these functions your library of two functions will be ready it will have no constants in it because i haven't asked any from you and then you will write another code just like i wrote this one where i import that library so in the second case you will write another script to import that script that you wrote in this section a here and then simply you will call it to print fx and fy by using put of force f as four digits of your registration number the last four digits and theta by taking the last two digits of your registration number and simply sub of both a and b files on google classroom and if you have any question i'll be able to help you in this all so be in touch with me this concludes this tutorial